Hello and welcome to www.collectingluxurywatches.com Today we're doing our segment on confessions of a watch dealer and uh, in my third episode I was talking about um, how Archie himself, the pro, had made mistakes. That's right, it's not all beer in Skittles, it's not just a matter of buying pieces cheaply. It's, uh, it's also a matter of being taken yourself as a dealer and that that has happened so I'd like to share those with you in all honesty I don't want you getting the 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 wrong end of the of, of the prawn and and uh, thinking that uh, you know it's all just a matter of Archie paying nothing for fucking treasure because Archie's had his his share of fucking bad buys too and let's have a look at some of those well I can remember I can remember this as clear as yesterday I had a call it was for a, a Rolex Datejust <clears throat> and I went out and had a look at it. It was a 1601, and it was a, a two-tone date just. And uh, I had a look at it. The guy wanted $1,800 for it, and uh, that was a that was a fair bit of money. I sort of uh, I was off guard because I'd uh, I'd bought so many sports watches so cheap. I thought, well, I'll take a punt on a vintage date just. And uh, it was 1800 the, the, the fucker wouldn't budge a cent. And uh, I was humming and harring and in the end I bought it. And that was a fucking mistake because it had a... The bracelet was fucked. The, uh, the dial was fucked. It was just a shit watch. I probably paid $1,000 too much for it. And uh, I got it serviced. I got a, uh, the dial was really shitty, so I got the dial repainted, and I didn't have all the Archie contacts then, and um, I got it repainted in Sydney, and it was just a fuck job they did on it, it was just shit house. and uh, the only way I could get out of this fucking piece, I, I, I took a bath on it, I, I remember I sold the, the bracelet on eBay, I got about, oh, I felt I felt so sorry for the poor bastard who bought that bracelet. It was fucked. I mean, it, we're talking, you know, we, we, you measure stretch. How stretched is it? This was grandma's undies stretch. It was just fucked. It was fucked. I sold the bracelet, I think, for $5.50 with a bit of shill bidding. Uh, the head itself, I ended up putting the head onto a strap. And I, I think I, I sold that for eleven $1 hundred dollars. So you know, I really, I took a bath on that, and I, I invested. You know, probably with polishing and redial, probably cost me over two. And I and I and I and I had, I just got out of it and lost hundreds of dollars. And I, I mean, th that's what can happen. But uh, I suppose you know the story is it, at least it was a real Rolex. It wasn't fake. You know, it, w it was a Rolex. And um, <clears throat> just to combat that story, I remember. The year was 1999, and I was staying at Coolangatta. And I, when I used to go for a for a holiday or something, I'd always go and see the the antique shops or the cash converters, the pawn shops, and just see if there's anything I could buy. And I remember I went in there, and uh, this was cash converters at uh, Coolangatta. They didn't have anything. I said, "Oh, do you have any Rolexes?" They said, "Oh, actually, we've got a we've got a watch that's on hock, but uh, it's just becoming available. You can have a look at it." And it was a red seed, sorry, red Submariner, box papers, everything. And uh, for that piece there, I remember I bought it. I paid for that there. It was twelve hundred bucks. That's what they said they wanted for it. Twelve hundred dollars. And uh, I, I sold it that day for five and a half, five and a half thousand. And uh, it was a nice piece, very nice piece. I mean, if only I had it now, the thing would be, you know, you're talking a $10,000 plus piece. But, I mean, uh, it was quick, quick, quick profit. Um, and uh, I sold that to another dealer. <clears throat> and, I mean, that, that's, that's how it goes. So you look at that. You know, that, that was from Cash Converters. 1200 bucks, box papers, red, plastic submariner. I mean, it doesn't get any sweeter, particularly from assholes like Cash Converters, Pawn shops, it doesn't the de the deal. Nothing is sweeter than that sort of deal, and uh, I felt on top of the moon. I mean, um, I mean after that, there, you know, you, you certainly, um, you know, you, you, I think you've 
you 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 won yourself an hour in the escort house, you know, in in in, in the, you know in the massage parlor for for an hour for, for to, to to get over that sort of win, <laughs> and uh, I mean it was just um, I was between marriages at the time, so I mean that that's 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 why. But um, I mean look look I mean you can have some wins and you can also have some huge losses. I remember a. Uh, a dealer that I used to buy things together with, you know, we'd occasionally go halves on deals just because, um, like, if I'd be working and I couldn't get to a a buy, he would he'd be able to go there and and I, and I I bought things for him and he bought things for me and we 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 worked together as a team, and I remember him saying to me, "Hey, do you want to come in on a gold Cartier Pasha?" And uh, money was a bit tight and said, "Look." It, it was quite a few thousand dollars. I mean, I think he was trying to shift me, you know, shaft me a bit at the time. But I said, look, I can't. I, I, I don't want to go into it. I don't want to go into it. And he said, okay, I'll buy it myself. He bought it himself. Yes, it was real gold, but it wasn't a Cartier. I think he paid four and a half thousand for a gold Pasha that turned out to be replica. And it was so good. The other way... The only way he discovered that was because the screws on the case were not exactly right. I mean, that's how fine a detail you've got to be there. Other times, <clears throat> look, I know, I know, uh, you know, it's a bit, we've watched dealers themselves there, they're a bit like the gambler. The gambler who talks about his wins. Oh, yeah, this horse, I won all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never talk about the losses. They only talk about the wins. And watch dealers are like that. If you get into a uh, a function with watch dealers, oh, yeah, I bought this watch so cheap and I sold it for this much and, you know, I'm just the fucking biggest swinging dick there is, you know, but they don't talk about the mistakes or the losses that they had. You know, they, they're very much like um, gamblers. And I suppose it is gambling a bit there, but... Uh, Another, you know, just, just recently I was talking to a dealer and he, he showed me a Patek Philippe uh, mid-sized Nautilus diamond dial in steel. And he said, hey, have a look at this. See if you want to buy this from me. And I had a look at it and it looked all right. I said, yeah, I'm just gauging price. And he says, I just bought this, but it's replica. I said, you are joking. It was so fucking good. I mean, I had a uh, an Audemars... Uh, Piaget, um, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak on my wrist, and if you look at the the, the clasp of that, it's very similar to the um, the Patek Nautilus clasp. And I said, this clasp is. I said, that's what I look at when I'm looking at a, a Patek Nautilus. I look at the clasp and look at the the dial. I look at the all the metal work. And I said, this is just so fucking good. I said, I said, it, you know, it just just looks so perfect. He said, yes. He sent it up for servicing. And um, all of a sudden, they told him it's it's not a Patek. It's got an ETA movement in it. And that's just fucked. I mean, just a replica. And, I mean, that's what can happen. I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, it's always... These dealers, they always like to say, yeah, I bought this so cheap. Yeah, I bought that so cheap. There's also some bad fucking deals that happen, you know. I mean, don't just be conned by, you know, dealer who bought this cheap or who's done this cheap. You know, there's some fucking bad fuckers out there, you know. <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, all fair, in love and war, you know, if you're stupid enough to get, you know, caught on these things here, you've got to fucking be so damn careful. And that's the thing, you know, the buying and selling game itself, it's getting much more riskier. You know, that, that game where you could, you, whereas before you'd have your, your honest punter who, who bought it, he doesn't exist anymore because all your, you know, anyone who's reasonably intelligent would look on the net. What's it worth? We'll have a look on the net. So, you know, these tales I'm telling you, these are sort of pre-internet sort of tales. Before, well, I, I, what I would do is this is what I, this is how I made my money. Is that I would buy in Australia with a very weak Aussie dollar, and I would sell into an international market for very strong U.S. dollar. So, you know, um, I'd basically buying it cheap and selling it to a market which appreciated it. But what's happened now is, well, the Aussie dollar is stronger than the U.S. dollar. But it's not just that. It's just that the punter, you know, because I was never paying high prices, let's be honest there. But the punter, he can now gauge the price on it uh, himself. He doesn't need to go to a dealer. And this is what's happened. Um, the world's changed, and uh, I don't know if that's a bad thing. I'm just telling you. These are some 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 confessions of a of a watch dealer. These are some stories 
that, that I've, I've, uh, I'm relaying there. But I mean, you know, it, it, it's getting a lot harder to, um, to buy pieces. I hope you've enjoyed this. In the next next um, confessions of a watch dealer, I'll talk about how I got my watch dealing education. So this is some some tidbits for all you aspiring watch dealers and um, some ideas on how you can learn the trade. And um, you know, because there isn't a university course you can go to how to be a watch dealer. You've got to um, you've got to get some now and pick up some things yourself. So. Okay, thanks very much, and don't forget to come to my website, www.collectingluxurywatches.com. Thank you.